It's not giving what it was supposed to give. <laughs> Welcome to And That Is Treese. I am, of course, Treese, if you ain't know. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for stopping in. If this is your first time checking me out and seeing what we got going on all over here in the space, we hope you enjoy these shenanigans and you decide to stay with us and become a member of the Treese tribe by hitting the subscribe button below. And of course, if you are a good and faithful member of the Treese tribe, otherwise known as my gang, 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 gang. I am so glad to see you back. Thank you as well for tuning in. It never goes unnoticed or unappreciated. All right, y'all, woo-hoo. I've gotten a couple questions from people that I know just about my wigs. Sometimes they have told me that they've tried, they've tried and they've tried, and the wig ain't wigging. It's not giving what it was supposed to give, and they want their money back. <laughs> so I thought to myself, hmm, that sounds like a video. So girl, we going there today. I am going to tell you five, that's right, five ah, reasons why your wig is not laid. Now before I start, I do wanna say laid is relative, okay? Somebody's definition of laid may be way different than mine. This is just my opinion. Take it with a grain of salt. In the words of your mama, if it don't apply, let it fly. I'm not the wig warden, I'm not the park patrol. I'm not the lace liaison, I'm not none of that. I'm just the woman who loves her wigs, giving my opinion, that's it. Let's go on ahead and hop into the video. Yo, I am specifically speaking to synthetic wigs. I'm not speaking to my human hair girlies. All right, so just keep that in mind when you're thinking about all these tips I'm giving. Okay, number one reason why your wig is not laid. You're choosing hard to work with wigs in the first place. Part of choosing a wig is working smarter, not harder. And you may be like, what a girl, what does that mean? I'ma tell you. When you're looking either at your beauty supply store or online at these wigs, you can only see so much online, but this will still apply, so stay with me. Look at how the part looks. A big portion of why that wig don't be laid is because it's hard to lay. Okay, it's hard to love. You ever meet people sometimes and they just, they have potential, but they just real hard to love. You make it harder on yourself to work with a wig when you get one that has a huge line of demarcation at the front, meaning you can see exactly where the part starts and where it ends. And there is that line right across. No, ma'am. Soon as you run across those, just eliminate them. You can also tell which ones just look too cheap. There's a difference with affordable. Okay, we like affordable. We love her. We know her. And then there's cheap. This is also a reason why I say advertisement is everything when it comes to everything, but especially wigs. If you're looking on the website and the girl or the model or the mannequin, whoever is wearing the wig, they, they look a little off you may not wanna buy it because the odds are if you're not super duper advanced or if you're not used to working with wigs at all, it's gonna be hard for you to turn that bad boy around to a good space, you dig me? So make it easier on yourself. If you know you don't do well with a lot of length, get your shorter wig. It may be easier for you to manipulate and maneuver. If you are a person that does not do well with a lot of baby hairs, that may be a hard to work with wig for you. It's real cute to have the frontal action going and the hairs all laid and slayed to the guard. But none of that's gonna matter if that's not where your skill level is at the moment. Look for a part, matter of fact, hold on, hold on. Look for parting that looks flat. Now obviously you won't know everything until you get the wig, but if you can tell, this is just one I pulled out of my closet, it has some baby hairs on it. That is not a hard to work with wig necessarily because the part is flat. Once you put this on your head and you slick it down and tie it down, you're not gonna see that line of like, dang, that's where the part starts, it's real humpy. I melt my part and lay down my lace at the front, especially with this Cream of Nature Maximum Hold Styling Snot. Love this, it's very flexible. It holds once it's on but it's easy to move if you add a little bit of water. It'll jelly it right back up and take it off. 
So I love that it's not pulling out my edges. If you don't wanna pluck hairs, if you don't wanna have to do a whole bunch of extra work just to get the wig to look nice, just pay a little bit more attention to the details before you buy it in the first place. And we thank God, we thank the good Lord above, okay, whoo, hallelujah, that we have YouTube, we have Instagram, we have Pinterest, we have TikTok now. I bet back then they just had to guess and go for the gold, okay? We don't have to struggle like that anymore, so don't do it. I'm looking at YouTube reviews. I'm looking everywhere to see what hair looks nice, how it looks on other people, what they think. Reviews do a lot. They matter, so pay attention to those. If everybody's saying the wig is trash, child, the wig might be trash. If everybody's saying it's shedding, it looks real shiny, it's giving plastic, it's probably not the one for you. And they have to do about 30 things to the part that may not be for you. This is gonna sound really juvenile and real kindergarten, but I'm gonna say it anyway. It's easier to complete when it's already neat. You take that and you run with it however way you want to. Number two, you are not customizing the wig to you. Give me a hand, give me a hand. As much as we love a really nice, really put together wig that seems like we can just throw it on and go, what a fantasy that is. No ma'am, <laughs> no ma'am. You absolutely cannot. I don't care how pre-plucked, I don't care how laid it looks out the box, I don't care how the curls are curling, the waves are waving, the straight is straighting. You need to maneuver that wig for you personally, period. You do get some miracle wigs, some real baddies out the bunch that you really don't have to do much for. That's not gonna be the case for every single wig that you find. Let's start with the lace. You may not be customizing the lace like you should, so it blends with your whole face. So as you can see, like this lace matches my face. This is my foundation shade. So the point is to have the wig look like it was meant for you as an individual. You want to shine, you wanna wear the wig, you don't want the wig to wear you. And when you don't make the changes that you need to, that's exactly what happens. It looks like it's just kinda of sitting there instead of blending with whatever you wanna do with it. So for instance, length and cutting. Again, if you get a super duper long wig, but you just really had to have it because you love the color, or you love the way that the curls are, whatever the case may be. If it's not working for you, girl, get your scissors and cut it. <laughs> if you don't feel confident cutting, then either get a shorter wig or get something different that you maybe don't have to trim. If you just see it and you're like, uh-uh, them 30 inches, not for me. That's okay. But if you're bold enough to do it, also be bold enough to make changes to the length if you need to. As wigs get older, you're also gonna have to kind of cut those straggly ends off as well. So you might as well get used to cutting and trimming. You may have to frame your face with layers depending on how the wig is laying, how the curls are forming, et cetera, et cetera. I always say this, don't rush cutting your lace. You mess up that lace and the rest of the wig can just go to hell in a handbasket. It can start shedding. I mean, the lace that comes on wigs when you first get them, depending on how they're built, it's connected to the rest of the hair. So if you're cutting it just kind of haphazardly, you may be cutting extra hairs. Now you got tangling maybe going on. It's just take your time, cut your lace, trim where you need to, add some layers and you will see such a difference in the way that your wig sits. Also figure out if you're a middle or side part type of person. Me personally, I like my wigs to lay in a middle part. I think it fits my face better. It's easier to see my eyes and my makeup. And I used to be riding for a side part, honey. I You couldn't tell me Nathaniel about a side part. But now I've just evolved and I really don't like side parts like that. Figure out, again, what works best for your face shape, your head shape, the way that the wig is supposed to lay. A lot of the times when you're looking at wigs, it'll show you, especially on review, whether it's a side part that's going to the left or a right side part or a middle part. However it's meant to be worn, find the way that you wanna wear it and that will make a huge difference as well. <sighs> now I gotta talk about baby hairs. I 
have a love-hate relationship with baby hairs. I think they're great if you know how to do them right. Do I think they're necessary all the time? No. I've seen them very thick, which is fine if that's what you like. I prefer a wispier baby hair. I think it just looks more natural. It really makes it look more laid. The point is know what you're working with. So if you're looking at a wig that is supposed to be like a, a four by 12 frontal, that may not be the wig that you want to get if you're not able to kind of do those baby hairs the way that would suit best for the wig or the way that would suit best for your face or your head whatever now sometimes that lace don't be sitting right just by itself and you have to add some baby hairs or else it's gonna be clockable <laughs> so that is an instance where i say go ahead and try to do it just know what you're getting into when you do purchase that wig and you see everybody else maybe adding baby hairs because that may be what you have to do even if that's not what you necessarily want to do but if your skill level's there if you know that you've done some practice and you can lay a decent baby hair, go ahead and lay the baby hairs. Make it easier on yourself to look more presentable. It will make it look just way more realistic if that's what it needs. That's another part of customization. It just adds some character to the hair. I've added curls. I've trimmed it down with a trimming tool or a shaver that you can get from like the beauty supply. I've done all of that. You cannot be afraid to experiment with customization if you want your wig to truly, sincerely, unapologetically be laid. How is your hair underneath? Is it in braids? Is it in twists? Did you just throw it in a ponytail? Is it wrapped? What's going on under there? If you want that top to be flat, how is your foundation? So for instance, my hair is in twists because I can't braid, girl. The ancestors didn't give these abilities to braid. So I have my hair in twists under here and I just have it bobby pinned down and then I have my wig cap on. I've maneuvered my twists so they're super tiny at the top where when I put my wig cap on and I kind of shift them around, it's flat. That's another part of making sure that you set yourself up for the best result from the beginning. So when you're going and putting the wig on later down the line and you're trying to maybe glue or spray or bobby pin, you have a clean, flat canvas to work on. Don't just pull that wig out the box, pull it out the bag, shake it out, haphazardly cut the lace, and throw it on and go. It's not gonna work. <laughs> it's not gonna go well. Don't do that. Number three, you are not utilizing hot tools. People see the word synthetic and all of a sudden we shook. Synthetic wigs have come a long way. A lot of them are heat safe up to 400 degrees. I've seen 410 in some instances. You cannot be afraid to throw a little heat on that hair. As long as you're not trying to crank it up to 500, you're going to be fine. You may need a flat iron if you're getting a straight wig to just maybe get some kinks out or really make sure it's bone straight. Sometimes you may have to use the flat iron to curl if you can do flat iron curls to touch some areas up. Sometimes you gotta reach for that curling iron and flatten out your top or that hot comb and flatten out your top so that everything is seamless. Invest in you a blow dryer of some sort to go ahead and melt that glue or that got to be spray if that's what you're going to be using. So depending on how bold and how advanced you wanna get doing these wigs, you're going to need to add that to your list. If you're getting the hump situation at the top, I will take my curling wand, heat it up to about 380. That's always a safe zone for me. I'll flatten out the areas that are humping up, I'll point, and then I'll put a scarf on, tie that bad boy, and we are good to go. If a wig is getting a little old, a little dusty, a little rusty, I'll put a flat iron to it sometimes just to get it back acting right. The heat kind of helps the fibers. Synthetic hair is a form of a fiber, okay? It is not real hair. That is the reason for the heat restriction but the fibers have gotten more advanced as we've gone along and we thank the Lord. So that means that we get the liberty that our aunties, grandmamas and them did not have with the wigs that they were wearing, okay? 
no heat could go on those, but you have a little bit more leeway, so use it. It's only gonna help you out in the end. If you're scared you're gonna burn the hair, start out at 350, work your way up. The hair is not going to us singe off in your hand, <laughs> unless you are just really pushing it. Number four, oh child, this is a bad one. You are storing them crazy and sleeping. You are sleeping in them wigs. Oh, girl, I'm just disappointed. If you want your wig to be laid every single time you pull it out and put her on, you have got to take care of her when she is not on your head. I cannot stress this enough. You cannot just throw the wig in no net, no covering, on the floor, in the closet. And believe me, I've done it, honey. In college, that wig went wherever it landed when the day was through. But that doesn't do you too well the next day when you try to wear it. It's gonna be a tangly hot mess. The way you get longevity out of your wigs, the way that you get a smoother transition when brushing and combing and all of that out of your wigs is to store them properly. That little plastic bag that the wigs come in, use those. Y'all already paid for it. Use the net that comes with it. When you're done with your wig for the day, and I say this in every wig review that I do, Take your wig off, wipe the lace with a little rubbing alcohol and a towel to get off any excess glue, got to be whatever you use to lay it down and spray it down. Put it in the net, put it in the bag, seal that bad boy, and then place it where you would like. That can be a crate, a bin, a drawer, whatever you have. That's it though. Okay, I need y'all to mind your business in my closet. <laughs> We're going through some things, all right? But I just did want to show you kind of how I store my wigs properly. So again, no, they're not in the most neatest drawer on a hanger, a wig hanger, whatever. But this is what I mean when I say put them in the bag with the net on. So same net on in the bag, protected, no dust. No tangling, no none of it. Okay, okay, let's get back to the video. Your synthetic wig is not gonna be laid when you put it on if you have slept in it every night since you bought it. If you slept in it a couple nights since you bought it, stop doing that. Especially if you're wearing long wigs, please. We beg. All them fibers are gonna co-mingle and congregate and have a fish fry and a cookout and they're gonna be laughing at you. You know why? Because when you go in with your brush and try to get it together, it's just going to tangle and potentially shed and that's just not cute. So one of the major keys to a laid wig is storing them correctly so you can have them at their best for the next use. And number five, you are not maintenancing them or letting them go when it is time. Let me scoot in a little bit closer so we can have a little, little fireside chat. Synthetic wigs are not meant to last you forever. A lot of these wigs maybe cost, what, $35, $40, some $60 if they tripping. That's great that they are so affordable and so available for so many different people. These are not bundles. You have to maintenance, yes, that is true, but you also have to know when to let it go. That's a word, that's a life lesson. It applies to life, but we are gonna apply it to wig. Know when to let that wig go. If you have had it for months, you've worn it excessively, not once or twice, you maybe wear it every day, you're noticing that even when you brush it, it's still not performing right. You put heat on it, it's not performing right. You try to boil it on your mama's kitchen stove, it's still not performing right. Throw it away. <laughs> Let it go and get you another one. That's it. Sometimes there's nothing else that you can do to get it to lay except start over with something else. Stop trying to revive it from the grave. Let that wig die when it has served its purpose, when it has fulfilled its duty, when it has given all that it could give. So if you can, it would be very good to invest in maybe at least two or three wigs that you can rotate. That way you're not wearing the same one all the time to do everything. 
And when you do decide to wear it, it looks its best because it hasn't been worked till it can't work no more. If you're not quite at the stage where you need to throw it away, you'll know, you'll know you need to throw that wig away. You also need to make sure you're doing maintenance. When you are wearing them, make sure that you're brushing them out. I carry a brush or a Y2 comb with me everywhere I go when I have on my wigs. Don't let them get to a state where they're always tangling. It's not gonna look laid if it's looking like a bird has just been playing all up in it. Cut off dead ends. Maybe add some dry shampoo if it's looking too oily, greasy, or shiny. You can of course wash your wigs if you're feeling like, you know, it's not smelling right. Or if you've worn it and you sweat in it. Cut it, wash it, brush it, flip it, bop it, Hotel Trivago. All right guys, so those are my five reasons why your wig is not laid. I have tons of videos on my channel reviewing different wigs. If you're looking for some that I believe are fairly easy to work with, I am not a super duper hair person at all. I'm more of a makeup girl. I've just over the years learned what has worked for me. I also have a video kind of showing how I prepare my wigs specifically. I do a talk through. That is also on my channel, so I will link that in the cards for you. I hope this video was helpful. Give it a thumbs up if it was. It helps your girl out a lot. Make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss a video, girl. We have chats like these. We get beat. We do hair. We do a whole bunch. Three tolls. You don't want to miss it. Follow me on all socials. Everything is in that is treats. My Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Stay safe. Stay blessed. Stay beautiful. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, y'all.